If you came for some inspiration on what value stocks to research, well then I believe this video is perfect for you. Today we're mainly discussing two different stocks, one of which I have been buying heavily the last two weeks, and the other one I will start buying right after this video goes online. Before we dive into that real quickly, welcome to another installment in my value investing model portfolio series, where I'm investing real money with a value investing mindset to build up a track record over time. Today is the 12th episode and let's get right into it with stock number one, Clearfield. And then this stock has been a journey. You see, when I first came upon the stock a couple of months ago, it was trading in around the $50 range. Back then, I was enticed by the stock. Long-term growth rates in the high double digits. A super clean balance sheet and a management team that has been with the company for decades already. So we bought up a position and that position grew from 5% to then 10% to then 20% to now being over 30% of the portfolio. And now with hindsight, it was like catching a falling knife. Moreover, I expected that this Q2 earnings report, which was released just a couple of days ago, was a massive positive catalyst for the company. And boy, was I wrong on that one. I vividly remember opening up Yahoo Finance like I always do and seeing Clearfield being down 33% after hours. Earnings were shit. Well, actually, earnings were pretty good and exactly as expected. What was shit was the updated guidance for 2023. You see, originally we were guiding for more than $4 in earnings per share during 2023, which would have been phenomenal growth. But now today, the company is guiding for half that. It's guiding for $1.8 to $2.1 per share in earnings. Fuck, did I make a mistake by investing in Clearfield? Is this just short-term noise or has the long-term story of Clearfield changed? And those were the thoughts that were immediately raising through my head when I saw that earnings report. Thankfully, we value investors and never have to make quick decisions. So yeah, boy over here had plenty of time to analyze the earnings report, the earnings call, and the transcripts of the earnings call. And in the end, this is my fully updated view on Clearfield. For one, I believe this updated guidance stemmed from a short term pool with effect, which is a well-documented supply chain phenomenon. Two, I believe the long-term growth trajectory remains the exact same. I believe Clearfield will grow well above its 2021 high in EPS because long-term fiber demand remains strong. Three, I believe the market has overreacted on Clearfield's earnings heavily. I believe the stock has become even better value than it was before the earnings report. For the Biden infrastructure package has yet to materialize and has not been taken into account with the company's guidance. But that all does coincide with just one negative. There are no real short-term catalysts for Clearfield stock. So previously, Clearfield to me was supposed to be a quick flip. And that part, that part of the thesis has changed. Now, because my short-term catalyst has dried up, I am planning on holding Clearfield for a longer time. I will be holding Clearfield stock at least until the sentiment around the company changes. And if that doesn't happen, then I will continue to hold until the business fundamentally changes. But the sentiment around the company is most likely to change when the direction of the earnings is also changing. So most likely you are looking around Q4 2023 or Q1 2024 for that change in sentiment. But that is stock pick number one, Clearfield. And while sentiment around the stock is negative right now, I believe that is exactly where a value investor should want to be. In a heavily overlooked area where everyone else is panicking. This was the valuation model I made for Clearfield back in February 2023. And even though the 2023 picture changed significantly, I still believe this long-term picture for Clearfield heading into the future. Meaning I still believe Clearfield is a $100 stock today. And that means that the potential value for an investor has increased, not decreased because of this earnings report. Hence why I have been buying Clearfield like crazy during the last couple of weeks. Just the last week, we added 60 shares of Clearfield, which is a substantial part of this portfolio. And today we hold 210 shares of Clearfield, which equates to 36% of the portfolio. This boy is that confident in Clearfield. Now we need to talk about the second stock I wanna buy heavily, but haven't been able to do so just yet. So it's time to talk about stock number two, Gannett. 
I believe this company is so extremely overlooked, it is actually insane. To give a bit of context, based on the 2023 guidance, an investor is getting a free cash flow yield of 25 to 35%, which is insanely high. This is deep, deep, deep value territory. To illustrate how heavily overlooked this company is, I was listening in on the Q1 earnings call just a couple of days ago, and I'm not kidding or exaggerating, but just two analysts were asking questions to the management team. Just two analysts bothered to show up for this company. This company is just that overlooked. So what does the company do and why are they so cheap slash overlooked? Gannett is a news company operating in both print and digital media. Actually, they are transitioning hard from print to digital. In fact, if we look here, the company is actually growing their digital side of the business at a 20% year over year pace, which is insanely high. But why is the company so cheap? Well, I believe there are two main reasons for that. One, they are operating in a boring AF industry, namely news networks and newspapers. This doesn't really excite investors. Two, the current deposition of $1.2 billion of long-term debt is quite high compared to the profitability of Gannett, which is a problem. Regarding the first one, that should be a positive to value investors. For some reason, boring companies are almost always a better investment than exciting ones. Regarding the debt, well, that is a fair worry indeed. The company definitely is over leveraged, but thankfully the management has identified this problem as well. To illustrate, the company paid back $37.3 million in debt during just Q1 of 2023. That is quite the fast pace. If management keeps this up, they'll be at significantly healthier debt levels reasonably soon. And those negatives stack up against this one massive positive. $85 million to $105 million in anticipated free cash flow generation in 2023. Again, that's about a 25 to 35% free cash flow yield, depending on where in that range the company lands. That is an insanely high free cash flow yield. So, are the risks worth the rewards? That is, of course, for you to decide. But personally, I could not be more excited about this current value proposition, and I am buying up a position reasonably soon. Now, there is one more topic we need to discuss. The comparison. Since episode 2 or 3 of this value investing series, we have been comparing this portfolio against the dollar cost average into the S&P 500 consistently. In the past, we were overperforming heavily, but currently we are getting fucked by the stock market. We are down about 7% compared to holding cash, and that means we're underperforming the S&P 500 by about 6.5%. I have been saying this since the start, but value investing in essence should be quite volatile. So the gains and losses that we're making in this portfolio should swing around quite a bit heading into the future. Am I worried about this underperformance? Well, no. I am super confident in the current holdings we have in this portfolio. I am super confident in the thesis we have created around these stocks. And again, as a value investor, I do not mind underperforming the market on the short term. This is all part of the value investing game. Investing, no matter which flavor you go for, should be about the long-term returns. Now, now, normally in these videos, I go way deeper into the specific transactions, how much I bought, for what price, that kind of stuff. But today I decided to go against that and mainly focus on the thesis behind the stocks. Let me know if you appreciated this updated kind of format. Still, I really want to share everything so that you at home can follow along. So here's the current Google Sheet breakdown of my portfolio. Here is a quick screenshot from the portfolio in my broker account. And here is a screenshot of all the transactions we've made over the last two weeks. So now that you all are up to date, time for a classic YouTuber disclaimer. While I am a registered financial advisor in the Netherlands, I do not have the legal capacity yet to give anyone investment advice. Therefore, this video and any other video on this YouTube channel can never be taken as financial advice. I cannot be held liable for the losses you make while trading according to my opinions. Please do your own due diligence. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Peace.